Thank you for joining us today on AR Build Junkie, where today we're going to talk about AR buffers. A lot of attention gets paid to various components in the AR-15 platform, and every shooter has their own opinion on which is the most important to ensure top function in your rifle. One component that often gets overlooked, though, is the buffer. Maybe it's not the most important component, but it is a critical piece to keeping the whole system running smoothly. The buffer and the buffer spring are housed within your buffer tube and set the pace for the cyclic action of your AR's gas system. After a shot is fired, the bolt carrier group contacts with the buffer as it moves rearward within the buffer tube, and the weight of the buffer and the tension in the spring resist the rearward travel of the bolt carrier group. When the buffer tube components recoil, the bolt carrier group is pushed forward. While all direct impingement AR rifles function essentially the same, there are two main differences in the sizes of buffers mainly rifle length and carbine length buffers. The important thing to take away from that is that there are two sizes and they are definitely not interchangeable. For the purpose of this article, we're going to be focusing mainly on the carbine variety of buffers. So how do you go about choosing the proper weight? Well, using different combinations of spring and buffers is a common way to tune your rifle. It's important to note though that the buffer and buffer spring are only two pieces in that puzzle. The barrel length, gas port size, gas system length, whether or not you're using a suppressor, the caliber of your rifle, and other factors will also all affect how the rifle manages the gases during the cycling of the gas system. The heavier the buffer, the longer it takes to move. Heavier buffers will also slow down quicker and smooth out your action and recoil more. Going with too heavy of a buffer, though, can cause the rifle to short stroke. In other words, not fully cycle, which can lead to inconsistent extraction and ejection. The rule of thumb to follow is that you want the heaviest buffer that will allow your rifle to cycle fully, extract and eject the spent casing, and load a new round into the chamber. For most builds, a standard carbine buffer is the way to go. A lot of times, however, you may find that the gas port on your barrel is slightly oversized. This can often lead your bolt carrier group to travel too fast and can even cause violent extraction. This is common of both factory and aftermarket barrels. And the reason that barrel manufacturers do this is so that their rifles will still cycle when people use cheaper, underpowered ammo. You can tell if your rifle is a bit overgassed by making a note of how the spent casings are ejected. Typical ejection pattern is roughly 3 to 4 o'clock. If you notice that the casings instead are being thrown in front of you, you may have an overgassed rifle. Going with a heavier buffer in this instance will slow down your bolt carrier group and leave to better operation overall as well as allow more of the excess gas and carbon to exit your rifle, which gives you a cleaner operation. So let's go over a few of the common buffer sizes. Starting at the smaller end of the spectrum, you've got your carbine buffer, which is 3 ounces. This is the most common buffer in the traditional carbine length gas system. It's made to work with a wide range of ammo, and can be used reliably even in some mid-length gas systems. The next up the scale is going to be your heavy buffer, sometimes also called an H-buffer or an H1 buffer, which will typically be 3.8 ounces. If you're running into any issues with hard running system or you're getting violent or erratic extraction, then switching to an H-buffer is the most common suggestion you'll probably receive. Next up the scale is the next heavy buffer, an H2 buffer. These will commonly run between 4.6 and 4.7 ounces. This buffer can be used in a lot of mid-link systems, but the most common use is going to be in pistol builds featuring sub 16 inch barrels and it's used to offset the more violent cycling of that action. Also if you're lucky enough to have a full auto gun or you're shooting a lot of 5.56 NATO then an H2 buffer may be the way to go. Next up the scale is going to be your H3 buffer which will commonly run between 5 and 5.4 ounces. With the AR platform coming in a lot of heavier calibers, including 762 by 39 300 AAC or 300 Blackout, 224 Valkyrie, 458 SOCOM, and even 50 Beowulf, an extra heavy buffer is often recommended. The H3, as well as the HSS and XH buffers, fit the bill on these type of builds. An HSS buffer will run 6.5 ounces, with an XH buffer running at 8.5 ounces. The last major category of AR buffers is going to be your pistol caliber buffers, which are commonly going to run between 5 and 8.5 ounces. In pistol caliber AR builds, you're typically going to be working with a straight blowback design. This also commonly involves a much heavier bolt carrier group, so a heavier buffer is needed to smooth out the action and keep it reliable. 
Now, apart from your common pistol buffers, you'll also notice that some pistol caliber carbine buffers have an extended base. This option is available because the bolt carrier groups used are usually a bit shorter because they're lacking the bolt. Because that type of bolt carrier group is lacking the bolt, this will lead to over travel when using a standard carbine buffer. This means that when the bolt's are turning home, it builds up more force and can cause undue stress to the bolt catch on those pistol caliber carbines that feature last round bolt pulled open. Now, one other exciting offering that is on the market today is going to be an offering from CAC, the makers of the Shockwave Blade. CAC has released a user configurable buffer system. Included in the kit is going to be the buffer body, two buffer ends, four rubber spacers, and then three sets of three different weights. Included in the kit is going to be three aluminum, three stainless steel, and three tungsten weights. Now, depending on which three you put into your buffer, this system will run you between 1.7 ounces and 5.6 ounces. So it gives you a great range of options for configuring your buffer. Now, one of the reasons that this is such a great offering out there right now is that buying several buffers to try them out can get quite expensive. At $25 to $30 a pop, it will definitely cost you a little bit of money to try out every buffer on the market. With this system, you have the option of trying out a bunch of different buffer weights for just a little bit over the cost of one single buffer. So this is definitely a great option. It's also very easy to put together. To assemble this, you're going to take your buffer tube, pick which three weights you want, and then make sure to put a rubber spacer in between each. So you could go with the heaviest configuration and put a tungsten in, followed by a spacer each time, and then follow up with your buffer end. And then just drive in a roll pin, and you've got a buffer ready to go. And then you can try out different weights to get different configurations and see what works best in your system. All right, so I hope that gives you a great idea of what options are out there for your buffer and gives you a little bit to think about as you're choosing how to set up your gas system in your rifle. If you have any other questions about any of the content that we've provided today, definitely let us know down in the blog comments. And thank you very much for joining us today on AR Build Junkies Look at the AR Buffer.